Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Brienne Beebe and I'm a high school math teacher. I asked some of my followers on Instagram what questions they had in general and I was asked about what I'm doing for emergency sub plans and decided that needs to be a whole video because there's a lot I feel like to explain. So emergency sub plans it's different now than it used to be because I definitely have a video all about my sub tub that I use so I'll have that linked below so you can check that out next just to see what it looked like originally and from this video you'll also be able to see how much that has changed so in speaking of changes my school changed how they wanted us to submit our emergency sub plans quite a bit in the 10 years that I've been working there so originally they wanted us to submit everything to the main office and they want three days of emergency plans for every different class that you teach. So the number of classes that I taught has changed over the years. Right now it's three, so let's say it was three classes. That means that I'd have to have all copies done for those three classes and I'd have to submit that to the main office. They were keeping them in folders that I'm sure you can imagine. They were big, thick, fat folders because we're talking about you know all the kids that you have, there's a copy in there for them, for three days it was a lot so eventually the main office was like yeah no then they decided they want us to submit just like a write-up of what the plans are so that they know so they can hand it to a sub and they wanted the copies of everything to be stored in our classroom so at that point I didn't really know where I was gonna keep the copies and I just wanted to keep it like really simple so I figured out textbook assignments that I could leave for all my different classes. So the textbook that we have, it's Common Core, and it was like the textbooks that came out before we really knew or understood what Common Core was and what we'd actually have to teach. So the textbooks, we never really use them. So thankfully I never actually had to give these emergency plans as an assignment for my students to do because they would have been lost they had never actually touched the textbooks before um so that probably would have been a disaster but at the back of the textbook there were all kinds of like review assignments so there was like review on solving equations all different things so i found assignments that would work for every class i taught even though it was like the geometry textbook i found assignments that worked for I probably had a non-geometry course then. I used to teach something called contemporary math. It was like a made up course. Like I was able to teach whatever I wanted. So, you know, I was able to still find lessons in the back of the textbook that were review that would still work for that class. And I remember when I handed them everything for my classes and it fit on one piece of paper, the office people were very happy with me because it was on one page. But like I said, thankfully I never actually had to do that. That probably would have been a disaster. So that was when I finally moved to a sub tub. So a sub tub is a bin of some sort where you keep all of your materials for a substitute teacher. So this is an idea that I saw floating all around Pinterest and usually it would go into emergency sub plans or even just normal sub plans for elementary teachers. So it would include all kinds of things like activities that they could do and cutesy type stuff. So it seemed like it wouldn't work for middle and high school but it totally does because essentially it's just a box where you store your sub plans. So the box that I use is a file box. I will link to something similar in the description box but I have hanging files and there's again we're still required or we were required to do three days of sub plans for every course so I'm going to show you what that looks like now okay so this is what my sub tub looks like right now and as you can see there's a lot in here so I have all the different courses that I've taught over the past couple of years so I'm always teaching geometry so in here I have um, this product I purchased from TPT and it's just angle pair relationships. They could always use help with that. I have the original in here in case more copies needed to be made. Day two, this is called a super secret number puzzle. This is for isosceles and equilateral triangles. And then for day three, 
Again, these were all purchased on TPT, so I don't even, I'll see if I can find links, but um, we just have more angle practice here. And inside of the page protectors, again, are the original copies in case they need more. Then I have my third course that I'm teaching, general geometry. So there they have a maze. They need a lot of help with like solving equations. This one is order of operations. Um, here we have angle relationships maze. And then um, some of triangles maze. And I'm currently teaching pre-calc and calc as well. So let's see. This is from All Things Algebra. Where's the front of it? All right, so it's fundamental skills, working with exponents and polynomials. Here we have um, factoring polynomials practice. And I need to add in the original copies. Now I might not have the original copies in here because when I last updated this, pre-calc and calc was a new course for me. So this might have been like me just throwing some stuff in here just in case. Okay, and then we have complex numbers practice. So that's everything I have in here right now. And then after that, I do have SAT prep, which I'm no longer teaching. Um, this all came from a book. I'll link that below from when I was teaching SAT prep. So these things I'll probably toss from SAT prep. And then way in the back here, I have AIS. So I taught seventh grade AIS for one year. And oh, that was miserable. So these things I'll get rid of. And then what we see here in this one that's uh, falling apart that I need to fix and replace, a bunch of worksheets. So what these are are worksheets that I had copied for my classes and then just never ended up using. I throw them all in here so that way if I need more than just these three days, they're in here ready to go. Or I could even pull from these if I know that I'm going to be out and I just need something quick for my students to do. In the front I have a folder. So I wanted to do a flip through of this folder but I just looked through it and there's stuff that I can't share in here. There's um, old rosters that need to be updated. There's my old schedule but my full name's on there and I don't share that online. And then there is um, just information about the class and it's just like that. Um, and then there's a whole list of where to find the different things in our classroom. So that box has not been updated since we were in school in 2019 and here's what it looks like now. So here it is, my sub tub update. And it might look kind of the same. So we still have three days of geometry, pre-calc and calc, general geometry. And then I have these green folders in the back that are just extra. So I have extra geometry, extra calc, extra general geometry. So these are just additional worksheets. So if, you know, my emergency lasted longer than three days, um, whoever's in for me could pull from here. But also if I have something come up last minute and I'm able to put sub plans together, but don't have something like easily ready I can just grab one of these and use that instead so that's what I have there and I believe a lot of these are like kind of the same as they were before we still have the worksheet some of them I need to make more copies for to accommodate my class sizes for this year but then I also have the originals in the page protectors and that's just so that if anyone's covering for me they can go ahead and just make copies of those if they were to need more than what's provided. The other big update I did was in the red folder. And it was simply updating the emergency plans on here. So my schedule's updated. It has pretty much the same message it did before. And then after the miscellaneous information, I would have rosters in here. I just didn't print them out. Um, so I'm thinking doing roster here and then seating chart on this side. So that way everything is set up for anyone that needed to come in for me for an emergency. So now here's the weird thing. We are finally back in school. We were never asked anything about subplans this year. At least if we were, I missed it because I was on maternity leave, but I don't believe we were asked anything about emergency subplans. And this is the year when we need it the most. I don't know. Maybe it's just an oversight. Maybe they just realized that teachers are stressed out enough and we have enough on our plates. So they're like, let's not really worry about forcing them to do something that obviously we should be doing anyway. Um, and then 
the last school year they didn't ask us for emergency plans then either and we started the school year off remote so since things have changed so much what i started doing was creating a virtual sub tub so it's the same idea i'm storing things in this folder that i could assign to my students online so this folder is being filled with assignments that I decided not to give my students for some reason. If I had it prepared and we didn't need it, whatever the reason was, if we end up not using it, I will throw it into this folder. And that way I'm able to pull all different kinds of activities that they haven't done yet and I could just throw that in if I needed to. And I also have purchased different activity packs on Teachers Pay Teachers. So those are also things that I will put into the the subplans folder and again I'm making sure to give them things that are very easy and simple to do so I like to give them types of activities that they've seen before like normally I really love giving my students mazes however I have not assigned a maze once this entire school year so it would be kind of strange for me to give them a maze now because if I'm assigning them a maze and I'm not there to explain it what to do what I'm looking for it's not going to go over well. The sub will probably be confused. The kids will be confused. So definitely big piece of advice. Try to stick to things that you normally do in your classroom. So this year my students are used to doing Google Forms. They like plain worksheets. They probably just really miss them over the past year. And I've been doing pixel puzzle activities with them or just anything in Google Sheets where they put an answer in and it turns green when it's right. So that's like the main three things that we've been doing in class. So if I'm out, that's the type of activity that I'm most likely going to be assigning them. So I was completely figuring that going forward, I would just do the digital sub tub because it's really easy to assign in Google Classroom. I actually had an idea to have the assignments like already drafted inside of Google Classroom and just have them like set aside and not assign them until um, I actually needed them. So I was considering doing that. I have not done that yet. I still might, but here's the thing. So because of the pandemic, my school became a one-to-one -one school. We were not before the pandemic. Every student has a Chromebook or what I should really say is every student has been assigned a Chromebook. Whether or not they have it right now is totally up in the air. It really depends on my classes. So my Regents Level Geometry, my Pre-Calc -cal classes, they have their Chromebooks with them. My General Geometry class, which is like slightly below level of my Regents Geometry, it's hit or miss. They may have it, they might not. They might have left it somewhere. They might not know where it is. It might be charging, like, I just never know. So initially, when I was giving them work to do with a sub, I was assigning everyone stuff in Google Classroom. And now going forward, my general geometry class, like they need stuff on paper if I'm able to plan ahead. So if it's a last minute sub thing, which I have had happen this year, which is not, normal for me it was like a couple days i had like a scratchy throat sniffles and i was like let me just use a sick day be safe just in case it was you know something serious so i did have to do like a last minute sick day and i threw everything in google classroom and that way i knew like what my students were getting rather than telling them to go into the sub tub that you saw what that looked like right not that would not have been a good idea so yeah, that's where I am now. Um, I like to have a bank of assignments I could use in Google Classroom, but I also am still going to continue using the sub tub with paper copies of assignments for my students because that is what's working right now. And it's funny because before I really sat down to think about it, I was 100% like, yep, all digital all the way now. It's just easier for the sub work because it grades itself. But yeah we're still using paper stuff so i like that i have the mix of both and it's whatever i need is available and handy but if you're looking for overall tips on what it is that you should be assigning or putting into your emergency sub plans um, i'm just going to read off a list of ideas that i have you want to make sure it's something that's simple you want to make sure that it's easy for students to do you don't want to give them something that's too difficult where they're going to complain and shut down and not work for the sub because then nobody's going to be happy work from a previous grade so 
like math from a previous grade level would be great because then it's like getting review and it's something that they already know how to do. We're assuming and hoping. I love the practice assignments that we don't use, especially if I have all the copies made. I don't want to feel like it's being wasted, so throwing it into the sub tub is great because then it's there. If I don't use it this year, it could be useful next year. Another idea is using TPT purchases. Sometimes you buy a bundle and you don't need every single item in there or you know you purchased it for a couple things but it made sense to buy the bundle and save money. So there might be extra components that you aren't planning on using but they're great to throw into a sub tub. And lastly, just make sure that the directions are something that students can easily understand, preferably some kind of a practice structure that you've done before, but if not, just make it very easy, very simple for them. So that is everything for this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.